Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon UK here, and in this tutorial, we are going to be looking at creating realistic grass really quite fast, okay? Like you can see in this image here. So let's get going. So there are in Cinema 4D a couple of different ways of doing grass. Um, I'm going to be looking at the architectural grass function. So to do that, I'm going to need something to say grow grass on, and I'm going to be you know, relatively uninventive and choose a landscape. Okay, let's sort of get it a little bit flat, so it's up and down. I might just take off borders at sea level, just so it's a little bit more interesting. Okay, and you get some nice ripples there. Now, in order to create grass, it's um, really quite simple. So go up to the floor object here and press the grow grass button. For lots of people in 3D, this is a button that lots of people have wanted for a long time. Okay, it's been in Cinema 4D since about R15. Now, when you press the Grow Grass button, you get the little grass material down the bottom and the landscape has the grass tag on it. But sadly, we don't actually see it in the viewport as yet. But if you render quite quickly, you can see that we have a grass function there. You know, we can see all of the little blades of grass. And I'm gonna go through some interesting stuff to do with this little tag here. So with the tag, it's you know really quite simple. It just says material, okay? And then we've got the material underneath that allows us to choose and change you know, a variety of different things, including its color, okay? So you know if you don't want to be something quite so green or if you want it to be darker or lighter, okay, we can change that quite quickly. One of the first things I'm gonna change is its density. So I'm just gonna increase that to 50%. And you can see instantly that thickens up the grass quite a lot. Now, I'm also just going to add a physical sky to this just because it gives you much more realistic lighting and it allows you to sort of seat that grass in a nicer sort of format. So there we go. That's not too bad. OK, so just going back to that tag, you can see that relatively easily I increased its density. If you go up to 100 percent, it you know, is actually quite thick there which gives a nice sort of blanket of grass. Blade length does exactly what you think it would. So if I change that to 50, let's just go to an extreme. Okay, and then render. You see that the grass is now much longer than it was and it's a bit wispier, which is quite good. You can change its blade width. So if you wanted incredibly thick grass, so considering it's 50 high, let's say 10, you know, this is going to be ridiculous but you will at least see what it looks like. You know, It loses its realism there because the grass is too thick for the sort of like length. And then you can really make it, if you wanted to go uber wispy, say 0 0.5 centimeters, and then render, you'll be able to see that it feels more sort of like wasteland sort of grass. You know, imagine if you change that maybe to uh, maybe a sort of yellowy brown and lightened it a bit and then rendered, okay, yeah, we're kind of a bit strawy, a bit more dead. It's, um, it's really quite quick, really quite easy to do with this sort of stuff. Um, then you've got crinkle amount, so if I whack that up to 50% and re-render, okay, you can see that it's now much fuzzier all the way around. I'm just going to go back to a, um, a decent blade width, lower that height there, so that it's a bit more manageable and just make that to a bit greener again, just so it doesn't sort of disappear. So you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, there we go. So you can see that that crinkle really goes, maybe I will you know, lower that crinkle again and you can see that it's much straighter. You've got a bend function there. So if I lowered that down, you know, and we just go straight, we have literally got straight grass looking totally unrealistic. If you went bend all the way 100%, you can see that it's now quite crazy. It's going all over the place. And then if you were to crinkle the grass as well, and then press render, there you go. You can see that it does in fact go everywhere. Kind of looks like fake grass at the moment. Wetness, um, I'm just gonna put those back at 50% so it's sort of halfway between the two. Wetness literally is its specular. So at 0%, it's not very shiny at all, like you would expect dry grass to be. And then 100%, you can see even on the preview, instantly adds a whole load of highlights, makes it look much more specular and much more wet. 
Okay, um, one of the things that I really do like about this particular plugin, however, is um, you've got a color texture and density texture, okay, which is quite cool. The density texture allows you to use some form of texture to show where the grass is growing or densities and things like that. So if I use a noise, okay, and then if I render, you're not gonna see much of a difference, okay? It's a little bit difficult to kind of see where it places. You can see that we can start to see gaps and things like that, but that's because of the noise that I'm using, okay? So I'm just gonna siphon through, find a different noise, okay, maybe something like that. Um, to do, do up its scale. Okay, so we've got this nice sort of gray scale stuff and maybe I'll increase the amount of black that there is. And now if I render, you can see it's a little bit thinner. It's not quite as well applied. If you want to see that more in clumps, on the tab, um, sorry, going back to the texture, if you changed it from spatial to texture to object, so it applies it more to where it is across the object, there you go, we're a bit clumpier. So imagine if that was a marshland or something like that, we've got some really quite good gaps there that give that space a sporadic sort of, you know, smattering of grass. And obviously if you were to apply a much better texture, or in fact any texture to the landscape object at all, it would look a lot more realistic. So that's that and you can you know, change its contrast. So the more white there is, the larger the amount of grass there will be. Um, the more black there is, the less there is, so on and so forth. So where there is the white, it will apply the texture. Where there is the black, it will have no grass at all. But that's quite a nice feature in this little tag to allow you to choose its dispersal, as it were. Uh, I'm just gonna clear that out um, because I want it to be a nice even plane at this one, at this point. And then I'm gonna look at the color texture. Okay, now again, you can use all sorts of image maps if you've got your own. Um, just to kind of demonstrate this for you, I'm going to use a gradient. Okay, the black to white doesn't really help me in this. So if I go to the gradient um, and I did that, for example, okay, and then I rendered, this will override the color that I have on the grass. And you can see that we've instantly got this black and white area. Okay, if I was to space that out, there should be sort of a bigger area of gray. Okay, and you can see that the grass now changes and fades between one and the other. Um, it's really useful if you wanted to do stripes. So if I was to go uh, sort of green again, ooh, maybe not that green. Um, okay, and I've got there, and I'm just going to copy that. So I've got this nice white stripe down the middle, and then render. You will see that I get this nice painted white texture down there, kind of like a grass pitch, you know, football pitch, tennis court, that sort of stuff. If you had an image of a tennis court, okay, that was made up of the green and the white, then you could simply put it in, oh, you could put it in this color texture here. You could use it to get that stripe all the way around so that the grass appeared as though it had been painted, okay. It's really nice to do that. And like you can see, it really gives a lovely effect to making it look like that the grass has been painted. Okay, I'm gonna lower its wetness though because it's a little bit crazy at the moment. Um, but the other thing I like about this is it gives you the ability of creating patchy grass like I did with my image. So my gradient, yeah, that's not too bad. But if I was to clear that out and I was to use noise, at the moment it uses black and white noise and it goes very, you know, it doesn't look much different whatsoever, except that it's sort of whitish and grayish. But if you were to change that noise color from two different types of green, what it allows you to do is to sort of patchify your grass so that it looks a little more realistic with a variety of different greens, okay? Now, again, changing the space from texture to object will highlight that on the object itself, which is quite nice. So now if I render, okay, maybe the difference isn't too much, but you can kind of control its contrast and brightness, you see, using this down here. So if I was to increase the amount of dark there and then press render, you can see, there we go, we start to get darker patches 
of grass. And it's this I find that allows you to really nicely control um, sort of how much there is, you know, if you want there to be little patches of grass or if you wanted to sort of lower that so maybe it wasn't quite so harsh. Again, perhaps you want to go for dead patches. So you want to go for um, sort of areas of grass where it's not quite so nice. Um, maybe if I, you know, changed it so it was the other way around. So there we go, we've got yellower patches. You know, patches there that have been sunburnt or are in a park and sadly some poor dog has peed on. Um, but you can see that you've got nice control there of where those patches are. Okay, and it gives you some nice realistic grass control. Okay, now you can't do much else with this grass um, other than look at it. Um, that's why it's kind of known as an architectural grass. So if you wanted something that just looks like there is grass on it and it's going to largely be used for images, then this grass will be perfect for you to do that. Okay. Um, oh, that was the wrong one to do. I want to lower its weightness even further. Okay. Um, and you can control all of that and you've got some lovely control with the color, some lovely control of the dispersals using those image maps here and, you know, getting different controls, getting different shades of grass is relatively easy to do. Okay, well I hope that was a useful and quick tutorial on the architectural grass feature in Cinema 4D. I'm going to be looking at a couple of other different types of grass and ways of getting to control it in some tutorials that will also be uh, available to you shortly. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Take care.